I have to toast my bagel here because mm -mm. I lost the questions. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Carla Toledo. I am a registered dental hygienist. And for the first time, my dear, we have a guest in the channel. So I'm gonna put her on right now. Her name is Jaylene, and she's gonna tell us a little bit about herself. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My name is Jaylene. I am a registered dental hygienist. I have been a hygienist for about eight months, maybe, maybe a little longer. I graduated hygiene school this time last year in April 2021. Awesome. So you guys had some questions. So Jaylene is actually my coworker. Um, and she is amazing. We love her here. And um, you guys had some questions. And I thought she would be a great guest. My first guest <laughs> in the channel. We're having some Starbucks. We are hungry. So you're going to see us chewing. And it's totally okay. <laughs> so the first question that I have is, how did you find a job once you graduated? Um, so I applied to a few different places. I didn't choose the first opportunity. I don't think you should always choose the first opportunity that comes. Um, I don't know, I kind of just kept looking around. I wanted a few working interviews, I did interviews. So I just think it's important to kind of find what's out there and don't take the first thing that comes to you. Awesome. And on that note, I'm also gonna um, ask you, so once you graduated, you applied at different jobs. What were you looking for when you were like looking for a job? Like what made you pick a certain office versus another one, for example? Um, truthfully, she lying. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure there's nothing in my teeth. <laughs> okay. Um, truthfully, I was just trying to find the schedule that I thought was good for me. I did not want to rush into a full kind of heavy schedule where I felt like I was working too much. I wanted to kind of take it slow a little bit. And I also, for me personally, I thought it was very important to find an office that offered one hour pro fee appointments. I did not want to work for somewhere where I only got about like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I just felt like I would not feel comfortable in an environment like that. And I wanted to be able to provide the best care for my patients. So that was a big thing for me. So we went to start bookies because what is this, the Java chip frappuccino? It's not that good. I don't approve. That's like diabetes attack right here. <laughs> so next question. My passion is to graduate my dental program, but I'm so nervous because I don't have perfect teeth. Any advice? Really? Um, <laughs> honestly, I don't think you need perfect teeth to be in a dental program or be a hygienist or anything. Um, I don't really have perfect teeth. I don't think you need perfect teeth, you know, if you want perfect teeth, that's probably something that you could work towards when you're working. But um, yeah, I just I feel like that's more of maybe a personal thing that um, you can kind of overcome yourself. So I will say that like I feel like our, like for example, my teeth like they're a little crooked down here and they're a little sticking out more. Like I have an overjet, but I do like it. You know, I think it makes me who I am, and it's totally up to you how you feel. Like if you want to get your teeth to look better you know do whatever you think you need to do invisalign whitening whatever but do you need it for the program or to be a hygienist no people are not going to judge you because you don't have perfect teeth like if anything people can relate you know and especially if you change it like she said once you graduate because some dental offices will give you benefits and you can get dental work for free there or at a really reduced cost so what uh inspired you to make the decision of becoming a dental hygienist um, honestly, nothing, nothing inspired me. <laughs> um, uh, after high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what career I want to go into. I was very interested in healthcare, but, um, I didn't want to be a nurse. I didn't really know what I wanted. So when I was a senior in high school, I had a friend who told me she got into school for hygiene and I was like, Oh, what's a dental hygienist? I had no idea. I didn't know what that meant. And um, I researched it and then I went to community college after high school. So over time, I just did more research into dental hygiene and what hygienist was it like. And it just really piqued my interest a lot. So I just did it. I love it. 
so see that's the beauty of it like we don't have to be born like oh i'm gonna be a dental hygienist mm -hmm. you know like it can come like i come from a background of working in cvs working then in a dental office and that's how i found out as a front desk that i really like dental hygienists and the relationship that they have with their patients so i love it like it just shows you that dental hygiene is so diverse we come from different walks of lives and if we can do it i feel like you guys can do it too <laughs> What board review book did you use? Um, I was very lucky. My school actually provided our board review for us. So due to COVID, um, things got a little messed up. It was supposed to be a seminar. Um, but they, and it still came with a book anyways. It was the National Dental Hygiene Board Seminar. I don't know. It has an apple on it. I don't know the exact name of it. Um, but it was honestly, I think that's what helped me pass there are other programs like Student RDH, but truthfully, I have looked through that. I didn't use it, but I had a friend that you like was utilizing it, and I looked through it, and I just felt for me personally, the way the information was laid out didn't work out for me. I really liked how direct and straight to the point the National Hygiene Seminar book was, um, and they do offer in-person seminars, so I... I don't know. I swear by this book. I thought it was super helpful. Um, I also did like kind of utilize my information I learned from school because I felt pretty well prepared um, when I finished. But I do think that um, that book was amazing and it helped me pass. Awesome. Can you give them a little background of what school you went to? Like, for example, I went to Middlesex Community College. This is a school in Massachusetts and it's only a two year associate's degree program. So my journey is a little complicated because of COVID, but um, I went to Masscology, Masscology, Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, um, MCPHS. They have a few different program tracks you can go into. They have like the normal bachelorette, like uh, undergraduate program. They do a pre-dental track program for students who are interested in going to dental school. And then they have a um, fast track program. That was my program. It was 16 months, so it's much more condensed. And it is a lot of more work because you're graduating in less or like a little over a year. Um, so because of COVID, unfortunately, it did take a lot of time clinically from us. So we did have to go over an extra semester just to make up our clinical time. Um... And I did get my bachelor's degree from it. So, um, yeah, I really love the school that I went to. I think it really helped well prepare me for the real world. So the same person asked also, how long did you study before you took your boards? Truthfully, I probably, I mean, so I studied here and there after I finished school. Um, I gave myself a probably a month and a half, I'd want to say maybe, um, in between when I graduated. Yeah, it was about a month and a half after I finished school. Um, so I'm actually straight studying, like very serious, about two weeks. Like I did not really go out. I was studying all day, all night, like very, that, uh, I'd probably say a week before I started that, that's when I kind of started to get into the habit of, you know, studying. Um, but yeah, I'd say probably three weeks in total, but two weeks of just serious straight studying. I honestly didn't want to overstudy, and I'm glad I didn't because I know a lot of people overstudy and they actually fail because they studied too much. I just felt like this is a good time frame for me, so I would just recommend probably like two to three weeks, depending on, you know, who you are as a student and how you study, how you learn, but um, I thought that was a good time for me. So yeah, probably about two weeks. That same person as well. Wow. She has Good question. <laughs> Are you glad school is over? Yes. Really? Really? Said um, she something. seems like a nerd because <laughs> I don't know. Um, I can be a little nerdy. Um, honestly, I I just I really was very happy with my program. I loved all my instructors. Um, I was very close to a lot of my classmates. We did have a lot of fun with school too. It was very stressful at the time. Um, I'm not gonna lie. There were definitely times where I was just honestly a lot of the time I was like well I can't wait to get out of here I'm so over school like I can't wait to be working but at the same time you should kind of cherish the time that you have and the resources you have okay. because it does get exhausting when you're working a lot like this is you know your career you're going into and it's school you have it it is stressful very very stressful there's a lot of pressure that you have but at the same time you're not fully 
into like the real world yet so um it is a little laid back in different ways i would say i will have to disagree with her that she's glad school's over because they didn't go back to school <laughs> Hmm? Is it, didn't you go back yeah, to school? Yeah, I am still in school for my master's degree um, in public health. Nerd. So, yeah, I'm technically still in school, but hygiene school-wise, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, next question would be tips for the second semester of dental hygiene uh, when you start seeing patients. Like, what tips do you have when you start seeing patients? Honestly, just have to go with it. I was extremely nervous. Um very very nervous when I saw my first patients I was very very lucky most of my beginning patients are my friends like my best friend was my first patient ever um, my family so I did get lucky but I know others you know if they're in school abroad or in a different state they don't have that um, but obviously you know you do see other patients that aren't your family and friends so it is very nerve-wracking <laughs> I was very slow with everything. I was extremely slow with everything. Um, I did get insecure sometimes because I felt like I wasn't as good as my classmates because I was. I felt like I was always behind. But really, you just have to go with it because towards the end, when you're almost graduating, everyone's at the same playing field, to be honest, and um, wow. you just get used to it. That's awesome what you said, like about you know that you your friends were in a different spot and you felt nervous because of that. But at the end of the day, you you have your dental hygiene license, you're a hygienist, and everybody goes at a different pace, but the race, you guys all finish. Yeah, exactly. Um, so just try not to stress. It's going to be stressful, but you'll get through it. My tip would be fake it till you make it, baby. <laughs> yep. I put, I know it sounds crazy, but when I started seeing patients, I didn't have family members. I actually took people from the street um, and advertised for cleanings or whatever. So mentally, the fact that they were strangers, I talked myself into feeling confident and then I think that helped a lot. The other thing will be review, kind of review like case studies and stuff, just to kind of get yourself prepared what questions people can ask you. And just and if you don't have an answer, don't lie. Don't be making stuff up. Mm -hmm. Just be like, you know, that's a great question. Let me find out for you. And then go to the back, go Google or go ask your instructor. Um, because, but like I said, just kind of like fake it till you make it. Be a little bit confident. And give yourself some room because you are new, you are learning, and it's totally normal. Like, you're not going to come out knowing everything, you know? And I That's still it. do that. I If I don't know something and I can't think of, like, some type of answer that would answer someone's question I'll, I'll go find someone and personally for me that's how I learn if I don't know something or I need help with something and someone shows me or tells me I remember that and that's just how I learn things so any tips on how to get accepted um honestly I don't really know I got accepted on my first try I also and that, well I also think it depends where you apply so Personally, in my experience, and I guess Carla could probably attest, if you're going to community college, it is cheaper, and I think most people are going to, there's going to be a higher volume of people applying because right. it's more affordable, versus me, I went to a private university, it is expensive, um, so I, yeah, so I think it depends on what kind of school you're applying, what the requirements are, um, so... Yeah, it kind of just depends. I just made sure my grades lined up to everything. I just made sure I met all the requirements that they were asking for. I did submit my application, like, very early because awesome. I just wanted to submit it and be done with it. And, yeah, so... Um, just That's as, actually great, yeah. submitting it early. I yeah, think. I submitted it, like, right when the application's open. I just submitted it right away. Did you actually have to do interviews in order to get in or just Not the for my school. Nope, just the application. Yeah, for my I school. I didn't do an either. essay, but that's essay. it. Yeah. I had to do also like a personal statement type of mm -hmm. essay. I did not <laughs> get in the first year, which is totally fine because you always find things to do and get better at stuff. Um, but I think one of my tips is like when you write your personal statement, have knowledgeable people read it and give you feedback and don't be afraid to to get criticized or if somebody tells you, ah, that doesn't sound good, delete this, add this. But also be yourself. Um, and I think, I don't know, I'm a Christian, so <laughs> in God's timing, you're going to get in when you're supposed to get in. But one of the tips is definitely, like she said, this is a great tip, apply early. If you don't get accepted, uh, send like a, a 
thank you note and make sure like they remember your name and stuff like that but also you have to work really hard with your grades prerequisites you want to have the best grades that you can but grades are not everything i mean are you volunteering like what makes you different like you know there's so many things that you can do to to stand out including maybe asking somebody from high school if you guys can create a group and go brush the elders teeth at a uh, what is it called nursing home or something like that like what what makes you different for you to be able to get accepted you know yeah and i also think like if i truthfully if i were to apply to like a like a community college where i know there's a long wait list and i probably wouldn't have got accepted my first try to be totally honest so i think it just depends um ask questions reach out to the school see how long their wait list is um their statistics so yeah yeah, and have like a clear goal too about like what your passion is or why you want to like really ask yourself like why do I want to be a dental hygienist and make it into a nice story. Like my story was pretty lit. I feel we got potato chips going. Mm -hmm. Next question is, um, I have to take the T's exam to get accepted into dental school, dental hygiene school. Any tips on how to pass? That would that would be great. I'm not sure if everyone has to take the T's. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Or not, but I know my school, I do. Um, truthfully, I didn't have to. I don't know much schools around where we are that has to. Um, all my friends that went to nursing school, I know they had to take the T's to get into nursing school, but I didn't have to. I don't really know. Um, maybe just try to find some T's resources and mm -hmm. um, kind of guidelines for that. But I'm truthfully not too helpful because I didn't have to take it. <laughs> yeah, I, to be honest, like you have me. Same thing with me. Thank goodness in Massachusetts. I didn't have to take it from my school. <laughs> but yeah, look for resources. I'm sure Amazon may have like cram books or um, things like that that you can use. Or um, uh, if, if you know anybody from a school that has to take it for hygiene, ask them what resources to use. But unfortunately, I, I don't really have an answer. The next one is how to improve time management. Um. Okay, I actually explained this to Carla earlier. But I think they're talking maybe like from transitioning from, from school. school to dental office. So yeah. for me, I felt like I got... So COVID did change a lot of like my schooling. Um, I was only in my second... Halfway between my second... Like literally took my midterms. And then when I was supposed to... Because we went on spring break when we were coming back. That's when everything shut down. <clears throat> so I was in my second semester... Halfway through my second semester of hygiene school. So basically halfway through school because I had four semesters of school um it did change the dynamics of a lot of it and because of covid we couldn't get into the clinic for about a semester and a half because we couldn't do clinic anymore that semester and then i went through the summer but we couldn't do summer clinic either um we didn't start again until that fall so to make up all the missed time and because of COVID requirements, we couldn't have all of my, I think there's 28 of us. We couldn't have all of, all of us in um, the hygiene floor mm -hmm. at the same time. So um, they would put us on clinical rotations and we would be kind of working um, in actual offices. And I think that this opportunity really helped me and it helps prepare me a lot because you're working in an office, you're seeing patients that are coming into the office, so they're not coming into the school. And um, I think it's a very different ball game. And for me, it helps because even though I was treating them, I always had an instructor with me. And if I had any questions or concerns, I could always go to them. So truthfully, I think that I just got lucky in that sense. And that really helped prepare me time management wise because we didn't get the full four hours like we did in regular clinic um we still got a little more time i think we had like an hour and a half per patient um and we had two hours for deep scaling but um yeah so i think that's what helped me but just in general try to do the best you can honestly you're not going to be perfect when you first start working and um that's okay like really just do the best you can even when you started working here, did you feel like a little bit slower in the beginning? Like, were you running behind? Yeah, or? I mean, I was definitely running behind. I, there's t obviously times where I was running behind, like, you know, 15 minutes. But I never felt myself running too, too behind. It was always, like, a mm -hmm. few minutes behind. Um, but you kind of just get the flow of everything and um, kind of learn how to 
do things for yourself right. to help your time management. Right. And I think also from what I remember, I'm the biggest thing that helped me once I graduated hygiene school with time management is what you have to do before you start seeing patients, like the preparation before. Um, I make all my goodie bags in the morning. So I come 30 minutes early and thank goodness I get paid for that because we punch in. I make all my goodie bags. I prepare the ultrasonic. Um, I go through all my charts, add everything that they need. Do they need x-rays? Do they need an exam? Do they, and I read my last note, like what did we talk about? Do they have pending treatment plan? Just so at least that I'm prepared. Um, and then the other thing that I do, obviously I leave my room set up. Um, so kind of like prepare before that way, when the patient comes in, you're ready to roll. Like you already know, okay, I have my x-rays prepared because they need x-rays and things like that. So I think preparing before will definitely help you a lot and staying, um, if you have your operatory that is only for you, or if you're, even if you're sharing like really getting to know your room so you're let's say you just got a job with this office before you even start seeing patients you need to be in that room figure out how the chair works what buttons go up and down um figure out how the x-ray works try to see you know the uh, software because every dental software can be different so try to learn how to use it um that way when you have a patient in the chair you're not like lost and all over the place i think Mm -hmm. Those are great yeah. tips as well. I mean, at the end of the day, everything's going to be so overwhelming. You can be so prepared. You right. can do all the things that are supposed to be right, but it's still going to be overwhelming. It's a new environment, new experience. You're just always going to be learning. I'm just obviously still learning, um, and that's just how it is, and that's okay. Just You just kind of have to go with it, and you'll get through it eventually. You just... It takes time. Right. And uh, another thing that uh, it wasn't asked here, but you guys need to come up with questions here, is um, so do you consider yourself like an extrovert, an introvert? I'm definitely more introverted. Um, I am very shy. I think the way I am is when I meet people. Like with patients, I'm not shy. It's a little weird. With patients, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm not shy. I talk to them, I get to know them, but just outside of that realm, um, I am pretty introverted, I am more shy, um, it takes me a little bit to like open up to people, I guess, but um, that's just how I am. And I will say, I'm the complete opposite <laughs> yeah. of her. I'm like crazy and wild, and I'm an extrovert, and I talk a lot, but it just goes to show you that it, that doesn't matter. You can still be a hygienist and be shy and be crazy and extroverted, and not every patient is gonna like my personality. Some patients will mm -hmm. be like, oh, she talks too much, or oh, she talks too little, or whatever. And that's the beauty of it. We're humans and none of us are made the same. Everybody's so different. So you, if whoever you are that's watching there that wants to become a hygienist, never feel like, oh, maybe I'm too shy, I can't do it, or oh, maybe I'm too wild, I'm too crazy, I can't do it, like, no. Dental hygiene is for everybody or anybody that has a passion to do it. So any last advice or tips that you want to give our beautiful fellow future dental hygienists? Um, yourself, um, study really hard. If you're very passionate about it, it will it will happen. It's not easy, but um, it's very worth it in the end and really rewarding when you get to it. And yeah, just don't be scared to do it. <laughs> Perfect. And on that note, we're going to close this blog thank you guys for watching if you found this video helpful give it a like um subscribe to the channel and share it to your um friends your classmates that could benefit from this content um but yeah have a great one bye, bye. i'm trying to eat this chip but it's so loud jaylene before we go home <laughs> we forgot to ask one more question do you recommend temping to um, new graduates? Um, truthfully, no. Well, I think it depends. I think I don't. I wouldn't necessarily recommend full time temping. I think it's better to kind of get your foot in the door somewhere to kind of get used to everything because I can't imagine how overwhelming it would be to step into an office as a brand new grad with no experience and kind of have to figure everything out yourself um with people you don't really know and i don't know i just think that it would be you know when you get a little more used to it if you start temping while you're working 
I think that's a great idea, but I just think that it would be better to kind of get a little bit of experience and then if you wanted to temp full time, um, yeah, I think that would be better. I would actually say the same, but again, everybody's different. If you can't mm -hmm. find a job and you have to temp, obviously you have no choice, but I also think it's better to have a foundation and work in a place get um a little bit of experience catch yourself with the time you know before and familiarize yourself with everything before you start temping because unfortunately sometimes when you temp you go to different offices every day and the staff can be very different some people are super kind and they understand that you're a new graduate or that you're there just for the day and some people can be nasty so i would say you know that totally depends on your speed and your personality because yeah. i did enjoy it i tempt until i had like i think two years of experience um and i don't regret it i would do it again like get experience first and then temp. Mm -hmm. so bye